Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Hey, Newcastle Crew, welcome to the Newcastle Crew Podcast, a podcast on the Southgate Media Group Network dedicated to the NBC show Constantine. I am Lilith, and joining me once again is our fearless leader, Rob. I don't know if I'm fearless. Let's go with uh, somewhat passive. (laughs) Well, that's a good way to kind of describe this episode, even though I like it. I like it, too. We're going to get to that. Definitely. Uh, So up for discussion is the penultimate episode of season one, Angels and Ministers of Grace. This one was written by Christine Boylan, somebody new to the writer's room, and Sam Hill, a new director to the core of directors as well. Uh, So would you like to give him the synopsis? Zed goes into a hospital with John in search of an antediluvian crystal. Am I saying that right? Your guess is as good as mine, sir. Okay. Well, he goes looking for an antediluvian crystal made of pure evil and discovers she has a brain tumor. Can we insert dun, dun, dun? Uh, Meanwhile, John discovers people at the hospital are being murdered by someone using the crystal. Left with no other options, he recruits a reluctant Manny to help him put a stop to it and save Zed. That is whitewashing what happened with Manny. (laughs) (laughs) No kidding! (laughs) Lilith, I am so glad I'm doing this podcast with you because the whole time all I could think about was our conversations and I'm like, it's a Janny episode. It was a full Janny episode. And plus, we'll say. We got everybody in the cast in this episode, okay? Yeah. yeah. I was like, what? Chaz is actually in this episode? Ch- the Chaz stuff was so great. The, the screwdriver, I just wrote on my notes here. I was just taking a couple of notes, and I put screwdriver, exclamation point, Chaz, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. That was so fantastic. We're going to need a big screwdriver. <laughs> so fun but the manny stuff was excellent it was perfection and it's like dude and then like the like i happen to have live tweeted this particular episode okay and twitter the 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 hellblazers on twitter were like hell yes more manny why did you make us wait this long everybody is so bitter about this (laughs) well you know what here you go at least you got the one Really great Manny episode. I really am really into it. Well, you know, use the hashtag Save Constantine and go to www.saveconstantine.com. That's how we roll as Hellblazers. <laughs> yeah. You know what? The other thing is, I think that that now, have you heard anything about when this is going to like Netflix? Oh, uh, you, you know, usually um, when, the sh- when a show is renewed, they try to do it. Um, and since it's they try to do it a month, a month before so you can watch it. And get caught up. Yeah, I was just wondering, since this is on the bubble, so to speak, I don't know if we can really say that, but since it is a question mark, I wondered if they were going to try to rush this to Netflix just to to see if there was an audience. I think they're going to wait on the DVD sales and see how that goes. Okay, because I think that it would be fun to uh, maybe do a rewatch or something where we can get, you know, people, the fans to actually like, let's all watch it at the same time. We'll pick like five episodes. We'll all watch those at the same time and hashtag save Constantine and see if we can't get some attention because, uh, I, I I'm telling you, I, that does get attention. It worked for Longmire. I don't know if you know the story with Longmire, but they did a rewatch and really pushed it at a certain time. And Netflix actually, took notice and that that was one of the things that helped with longmire and with the killing too and beauty and the beast actually i'm surprised at 
how much I loved it. And you know what? I think I pinpointed, aside from Constantine himself, aside from the, the geeky elements that tweak me, I think I know why this is connecting so strongly in the second half of the season. This show is a supernatural Doctor Who. Totally see where you would say that. In this episode, when Zed was in her little cha- her room, like she went through the door and she was meditating. You remember that? Great oh, little- yeah. And and I think it was maybe the last episode. Uh, it was it, when uh, Daniel Faraday, we'll call him, uh, <laughs> when he was there. And he was like, this place is great. I, I got a little TARDIS tweak there. This one, when he went into that room and there was Zed, I was like, this is the supernatural TARDIS. And how he has his companions, how he doesn't get emotional with them or tries to stay distant, how like he how he loves people, but kind of despises them all in the same breath. And like. All of that is Doctor Who. So I think that's why I'm like loving this so much. And the portrayal of Constantine is just killing me. I just love him. Yeah, Matt Ryan has been slaying it since day one. Um, I will say though, like that like if this episode hadn't been the penultimate, I would have definitely graded it higher, but this is the penultimate episode. It really and then like to watch the episodes back to back, you're just like, huh? Like, they're I, good I, episodes, but they don't go... Like, this kind of like the season. Like, you get a really good episode, and then the next episode is just like, wait, what? We're not going to talk about that? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Your, 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 uh, your reference to penultimate is absolutely accurate, because that is something that I, I'm usually aware of, because I have to watch so much TV and, and talk about it so much. I have a certain expectation of the penultimate episode, and this did not fulfill it. But if this had been... The episode before that, if this had been episode, what was this? Oh, this was 12, right? So if this, if this had been 11, I would have walked away from this feeling much stronger about it. I do. I did love it. I, I'm probably going to grade it higher than you are, but I think in a story, it's not strong enough to be the episode before the finale. Definitely. But like I said, I love this episode. I thought the visual imagery was gorgeous. The tone of it was finally just the way that I liked it. Yep. And like I said, we got the whole cast. Like It was like they were really learning the lessons. They were throwing in the really cool Easter eggs. We're getting deep into the DC mythos. And I was just yep. like, yeah! But what about that rising darkness? <laughs> That's the thing that was gnawing in the back of my brain the whole damn time. You mean the thing that they kind of forgot about in the episode that should be all about that? yep i mean seriously that's what i going into this episode i fully expected i mean look at the name angels and ministers of grace i thought this is going to be and when i saw manny i was like oh this is going to be rising darkness against manny i i had a feeling we were getting a big manny episode right but i thought it was i thought this was the one where the cards are going to start to get flipped and if we are going to end on a cliffhanger that The stakes go up here, and then in the last one, we think it's resolved, and then, boom, the stakes go super high in the cliffhanger. But the stakes didn't go up here. All it did was give us a good story. It it was character building for Manny and for Constantine, and for Zed, arguably. That's really stretching it. (laughs) Stretching it thin. (laughs) Well, it it was. You mean Zed? But it was in that, like— She's committed now. We get it. Yeah, yeah. The fact that she didn't want the tumor out, although I think that was all bunk. Uh, the, the tumor, yeah, they see the tumor. I think that that was the the guy. I, I, I I'm confused. I don't know what his end game was with her. The whole second chance thing was a little bit weak. Even the the whole demon was a little bit weak. But the twist was really good. We, did you know that was going to be that he was going to be the demon? Not at all. Yeah, that was good. I think that that that's why it was like they wrote it for the twist of the twist without really trying to make it logical. Yeah, yeah, and and no, it wasn't character development for Zed. It was. It was more like it, it laid a little groundwork. It gave us a little motivation for hopefully what's going to happen with her. It, it's just like Chaz. There was no character mo- movement for Chaz, but it was fun that he was here. Manny especially. It was a Manny episode, but Manny and John, that was great. Better yet, Manny and Zed. It was perfection for me. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Gee, when they were at the end, I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. I, that had to be, Lilith, you had to have the feels. In that I end. did. I knew you did, dude. I I, I um <laughs> I squeezed so hard. Fair girl squeezed so hard, like, and I tweeted it, and like, hero Perennial goes, "Oh, so sweet," and I was like, "No, <laughs> he saw it. No, <laughs> I'm I'm a hardcore critical uh, analytical person. You did not see that." <laughs> But I, I was like, dude, by the time the end of this episode ended, I was just like, why would they do this to me? This had this show can't end. 
No, that was really, really great. This was another one where the whole price of admission was worth that last 30 seconds. It really was. Because when we started it, I'm just like, okay, another weird random cold open. And yep. it's like, are we? is this the don't Say No to Drugs Kid episode? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. And I didn't really, like, I didn't care about any of that. I just didn't care. And I didn't really, like, I, I did, once again, there was that little bit of 80s horror film with the uh, the drunk janitor, like, the way they shot that, how it was the POV of the, the monster. Yeah, I was totally like, okay, we're back to 80s horror films, which I'm good with. Keep doing that. Um, did you catch the Time Bandits reference? I don't know if it actually was, but it totally tweaked my Time Bandits thing. Did you catch it? When they were talking about the Black Diamond? And it's like, it's evil. Don't touch it. I'm like, that's the kid in Time Bandits. It's like, I, I'm never like a fan of these cold opens. I just want to get to the mill house. I want to see what my favorite people are up to. <laughs> yeah, the cold open was was weak. Like I said, I just didn't care. Like, it wasn't a good jump scare either. Like, when when the, the one guy, I don't know what his name, Michael or something, the guy that was all angry and his face was all messed up, I was like, you know, it's going to turn out that it's not him. Like, you, I, it was telegraphed. He's just an angry dude. And I think that was a misstep, too. I think you could have explored that even further. Maybe maybe he wasn't the dude, but maybe inside him was part of whatever this is that, like, blows the situation out of control. But it didn't happen. But once again, do I really want to change it? Because by the time it gets to what happens with Manny, I was really down with all that. That scene with Manny Wings. Oh, my gosh. The structure of this episode kind of reminded me of Saints of Last Resort Part 2. It's like, let's just get some stuff going and we'll, we'll fill in the plot and then boom, hit them with the crazy stuff. Yes, very much so. First, it's like Chaz and John talking and then John goes off to find, you know, Zed in her room of relaxation. <laughs> yeah, right. And, you know, he's like, hey, we're soldiers in this fight. You know, we got to do what we got to do. Come on. Then Manny shows up using Chaz's body. Yep. How'd I, how'd I get here? Ah, oh, Manny! But he sets the scry map on fire because he says it's a crutch, you know, and it's a, it's a call to action. And I'm like, well, Manny is officially not beating around the bush anymore. He's giving him direct orders. Yep. Yeah. I it, Like I said, it was all awesome. I, I like that they, they could have, if, if they wanted to, if, I, I'm not going to get this out right. I had a fear that, that what we saw in this episode, we weren't going to see it all this season. And that moment with Manny, I thought, okay, the importance of this character and his real viewpoint on things, we're not going to get a real glimpse into it until hopefully a season two. But this really set the groundwork. I love this scene. Yeah, it was great. But, you know, Constantine, he's a stubborn little little jack also. But he eventually tells Chaz to get a screwdriver. They're going to the hospital. <laughs> get, the, get the biggest screwdriver. Why? <laughs> the, the next scene. Oh, that was terrible. And I love how he gets out of the car. He's like, that really hurts. <laughs> He's like, you should have just killed me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was cute. That was cute. Yeah. And so they, that mean, literally, he ends up next to the lady that they're looking for. And, you know, he goes, hey, can you uh, cause a distraction? So Chaz kind of <laughs> tweaks it and, like, bursts an artery so that John and Zed can get close to the lady. Zed gets a vision but sees it out. <laughs> right. And I'm like, oh, didn't we do this already? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Once again, it didn't, nothing really happened here. It's just like, I, th I thought, okay, this is a plot device. She's going to end up in the hospital. She's going to be in danger. Like it, everything seemed very telegraphed here. After that, they kind of take her away and he sees that the woman has a black veins and she dies. <sighs> so like, then he goes up <laughs> on the roof, like, no, like he's like, uh, what happens after that? It's like, so, it was like, so like such a rush to get to the, like Manny being human thing. You know what happens here? Another Doctor Who reference, he walks in with his card and, and he uses it like psychic paper. Yeah! <laughs> Which, of course, I went, awesome! Doctor Who! It was it was fantastic when he did that. Yeah, trying to get into the morgue. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, what happens here? Does it matter? I mean, in comes the angry guy with the mel melting face and... And then John has the confrontation with Manny. I mean, if you look at my notes, that's exactly how it goes. It's just like. But he goes out for a smoke on the roof and then the, the doctor, Dr. Bob, comes down and he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I shouldn't smoke. He's like, actually, I came to you see if you can bum a smoke. I'm like, never trust a doctor who smokes. <laughs> and, and so then Manny uses the body, but John has a trick for him. <laughs> This was fantastic. I, I will say I didn't see this one coming. He pulls that vial out and steps on it. I actually had to rewind it because I was like, what just happened here? And Manny, 
his Harold Perrineau's reaction in this scene is excellent because it's not like shock. It's not like uh, he doesn't overact it in any way. It's just really great acting where it, when it, when it happens, when he pulls the vial out, Manny has to, he just is as confused as we are. And it's just pure confusion. He just sees it and John drops it and crushes it. And it's kind of like, wait a minute. And he wakes up and he's getting stuff carved into his chest. And I'm like, um, Constantine, there's not time for your kinky fun and games. Okay, sir. We have serious things to do. It was this whole scene, just really solid acting and I mean, really just excellent stuff. And I love how he grounded Manny. I love that whole concept. It it almost I it could have teetered into that like I always call it like like eighties TV territory uh, you know like okay we're gonna take this character now they're gonna be grounded they're gonna get a glimpse of my slice of life and blah 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 but it 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 didn't really go there it only had a couple of moments of that right at the beginning and then it became very much like I bought it I bought like wow Manny is he doesn't have a lot of time with this and he's feeling pain and he's having experiences. <clears throat> nurse hottie in the closet that, that whole thing well like i'll tell you another nice moment when she leaned over him and she was helping him with the computer he sniffed and i thought he doesn't john had already made the reference he doesn't smell like when they were at the dead body he didn't smell that yep. and like he's like oh my god what is that terrible smell well he did that when she leaned over and got the little you know graze but he also like smelled and it was like he's smelling somebody like this for the first time, a different, like the pheromones. Like it, it was a really interesting little thing that was happening here. And I think that well, the reason why they actually, actually had to have this episode was back when we had that fallen angel and he was asking her all these questions about what it was like to be human, to feel the sun. And I think this episode probably kind of came out of that. Cause that's an interesting question. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Either that or they knew they were going to do this and they used that to lay the groundwork back then to make this more impactful. I, like, I, I love to see John emotional about Zed um, when he was, you know, telling Manny, hey, you're going to help her. You're going to heal her. I don't care about the rules. <laughs> it's nice to see Constantine like that. Yeah, I, definitely. Well, once again, I told you this is this is the Doctor Who coming out. <laughs> well, they should have brought it out earlier. Definitely. <laughs> So we kind of learned a little bit about what might be going on, the legend of the heart of darkness and the black diamond and all that stuff, which is a huge DC Easter egg. Because that really was the most interesting part of the story, you know. And they just couldn't go full on, obviously, right. about what was going on. But I thought that was a really cool reference. But like, so yeah, Manny goes, oh, it wasn't a legend. It's, it's real. I saw it. I was there. Right. I was like, of course you were, Manny. <laughs> of course. And so, you know, John tells him, hey, he gives him a task. He's like, hey, at least you're a doctor. You have free rent in these halls. I have to go do something. Right. And so John had sent Chaz back to the mill house. And so he joins him looking for that box with the black diamond shard in it to do a little experiment or, you know, to use Chaz as a test subject. Not a guinea pig, a test subject. Right. Uh, can I also point out that this scene brought back the cattle prod? Oh my God, I have this in my notes, Rob, just for you. <laughs> I, I was so excited when it came back. I was like, that is so fantastic that he, no reference to it. He just pulled it out and shocked him. It was great. I was like, dude, our budget's so tight. We have to reuse props. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you're going to reuse one, that's the one to use. And, you know, it was, it was very apropos. Like I tell you guys all the time, Charles Haverford is a huge, hokey man. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man, when he hit Constantine, it was like, holy moly. I thought, how's he going to deal with this cattle prod? That's how you deal with it. But no, the gun. He's like, what's the gun for? He's like, worst case scenario. <laughs> oh, my God. But no, what's even better is that Chaz was telling, you know, um, John, hey, man, you need to go check in on Zed. I'm worried about Zed. You know, and he's like, We're, we, we've got something else to do. You know, Constantine's right. avoiding it. But like this really solidifies the fact that they're a team. They care about each other. You know, you don't see Zed in uh, Chaz together too much but he really does care about her um so yeah after he learns what what what's what he gets it and uh he's like all right off back to help Manny yep <laughs> so he pages Manny and he's like um yeah you smell like perfume, perfume. <laughs> <laughs> an embarrassment and so basically Constantine gives him a, a roundabout birds and the bees lesson and I'm just like really Constantine <laughs> I I love how he called him out immediately I mean, it, there wasn't even a, like, you know, questioning. He knew immediately what went down. That was great. 
So they go back to playing uh, doctor detectives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they start to piece together the motives behind the Black Diamond Killer. And it apparently looks like it's um, the killer's tardy targeting addicts who have wasted their second chance at life yeah okay yeah exactly i roll insert i roll here <laughs> and then so this but this does lead to manny calling john out about having a difficult conversation with zed you know yes he's like you're running away from it you need to tell her if you can't talk to her now when will you be able to great line and you know what it's almost like they could have edited the demon stuff out of this one uh, except for the ending except until galen turns uh because all the rest of it is what we're reacting to like oh great line and oh i like this with this character so yeah they kind of split up again and manny goes to check on uh, zed in the guise of dr bob but zed sees through it and they have that really cool heart to heart but evasive heart to heart shall i say because manny true angel fashion doesn't really answer her question <laughs> right but he makes her feel better he has Better bedside manner than most doctors I know. I'll just, you know. <laughs> right. I, I love that, though, when she called him out, she didn't know who he was. As soon as Galen walked out of the room, she said, all right, who are you? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I really enjoyed this scene. And I was I was definitely, definitely not suspecting Galen. In retrospect, I, I look back and I think, you know, hindsight, I think, wow, you should have known because he was too good to be true. But I, but I really was suckered in. I really never thought for one second that he was anything other than her doctor. And he was giving her just straight ahead information. And that scene with Manny, I, you know, when he left and, and then they had their conversation, I was, it, it never occurred to me. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, we were at the 33 minute marker at that point. I don't know if you realize that. No. <laughs> and I'm like, wh- where is the bad guy? Yeah. Like, that's the whole episode. I'm like, where is the bad guy? What is going on? <laughs> I couldn't piece it together at first. I was actually starting to think that the bad guy, by by this point, I was thinking the bad guy was just like a, a, a non-physical manifestation. That that the reason that he appeared in the closet with the drunk, I thought he wasn't hiding behind anything. He just appeared. You like that sound effect? Uh, I worked hard on it. Uh, but <laughs> that's what I was thinking. You know, I didn't really... so. Uh, yes, I was waiting to see the bad guy, but I never thought it was going to be a physical manifestation. So, like, when John says, like, I said, we're at the 33-minute marker, he says it's more the angry patient. I'm like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> let's get rid of him. Let's get back to some Manny and Zed. Yeah, right. And so he kind of tries to go find him, and he sees the lights flickering, because that's always a bad sign in any Supernatural show. Yes. And he's following it, and he's following it, and he attempts to um, go find him, and he does, but there's this thing attacking him so it's not Morris but you know John gets knocked out yep <laughs> Poor and, guy. Yeah, and then Manny has to wake him up or whatever it was this was one of those scenes that kind of went r- real quickly and I'm like wait a minute he was just over him and now John's knocked out what 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 but he said I, he paged him. I remember because he's like, if you had a pager as an angel, it would make my life a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you ask more nicely like Zed, he would come for you, John. <laughs> Just saying. So they're like, oh, crap. And so they have another talk. And he's like, you know, Manny's finally like, you know, John, you really need to deal with this. And that maybe Dr. Galen's the guy to help. And here it is. Yep. The twist. I was shocked. I was shocked at this. I was just like, wait, what? No, why do you have to be the good guy? This was well played. Definitely. And so they kind of, uh, we, then we cut to Zed, who's like leaving against medical advice. And uh, he's like, no, you should really stay. And that's right at the time where John and Manny show up and they kind of tell him what's going on. He's like, I don't know what game you three are playing. And then John pulls out that other shard and things go wrong. Yeah, they do. That's when the whole jig is up. But once again, do you think now, do you think Galen knew or was he being possessed by this? I definitely think he was being possessed by it. Yeah, I I think he was sincere. And I think that's why we fell for it so much. I think the actor chose to not be hiding the demon as much as he was being possessed and had no like he was being a doctor. It was when the demon wasn't getting his way that it surfaced. You know, now that I think about it, we should have totally saw it coming. Like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. (laughs) We should have. Oh, now that you say that, now I feel like a fool. It's so obvious. It just hit me in the head like that right now. I was just like, I'm such a dummy. It was Uh, right here. Actually, wasn't it more Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Sloth from the Goonies? Because he looked exactly like Sloth. 
Yeah, th- these weren't good on um, makeup or special effects this week. I wanted him to eat a baby Ruth. That's what they sh- really should have had some kind of reference because it would have at least made it funny. This was this was like, hey, we've got one of those. Somebody melted one of the masks accidentally. Let's just put some makeup on it. We'll make that the, the monster this week. No, they tell Zed to stay there. Of course, she doesn't, though. She figures out what her initial vision meant, and it was had to do with Manny being the one to come to the rescue. So she goes to find him. They get locked in that room. And John's like, oh, well, Jig is up. Here, Manny, I'm going to release you. Yeah. <laughs> and Manny growls like a rabbit. <laughs> oh, fantastic. And he gets it done and, and, you know, his heavenly light destroys everything. And he's allowed to take that uh, Dr. Galen's good part of his soul back to heaven. That Once again, I thought now we said that the effects weren't good, but I think they spent the entire budget on Manny's wings. Definitely. So, you know, after that's all resolved, we kind of come back for the closing parts. And it's Zed and John in a church praying in the church church hospital, right? Almost one of my favorite moments of all time on this show. It might be my favorite moment right here. John picks up a prayer candle and lights his cigarette in a church. (laughs) Classic Constantine. It really was. Yeah. So, there, you know, Constantine has a moment with Zed and he tells her, you know, hey. First five minutes of every morning, I pretend like I lose all all my closest friends are dead. And, you know, it just helps for when it actually happens. Yeah. And she's like, you know, and just bless Zed's heart. Oh, I'm important to you. Not like, oh, you're a weird psycho. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> just, I just gotta love Zed, man. She's so sweet. And so Manny pays a visit. But now he's he's visible to both Zed and John. And John kind of leaves them alone to have a moment. You know, Manny tells her that, you know, everything comes with a price. And maybe, you know, her tumor is the price for her pain for her abilities. I also like that he said, it's. I don't know when it's your time. He said that, was it here or was it earlier? It was in the hospital room. He's like, that I cannot answer for you. because, But it's because he was cut off from his powers. But also, he's not going to be the one to reap Zed. Right. So he may not know, even in this scene, he may not know, which is why he's saying to her, you know, this might be the price. He's not saying to her, this is the price. You know, this is where it's going. So it still leaves that question. And I really don't think he knows for sure. Or maybe he does. Yeah, maybe he does. And he just doesn't want to hurt her or whatever. I mean, he's... Are you, are you watching The Flash? Yes. So Manny, I feel like, is our Dr. Wells. That's the feeling that I get. Like, he yeah. does good things. We we root for him every now and then. But every now and then, he does that one thing that kind of makes you go, hold up now. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's suspicious that he's... Not such a good guy. I mean, we, we've we been wondering because the last time John had that run in with uh, Dr. Yeah. Midnight, you know, hey, you've got a Judas among your camp. Yep. And the way and that it him. was worded seemed like an Easter egg that pointed to Manny. Right. So it was just like ever since then, everybody's definitely been like, oh. So that brings us to the great about the penultimate episode of Constantine. Rob's probably going to be a softy and I'm probably going to be a hard ass. But that's just how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> what is that how we were all here pretty much you know i i actually I, I, man it's it's tough i'm i like this episode a lot as you know i uh, i'm gonna go with a b i think that's a fair letter to go with <laughs> i you know what? i actually liked this episode quite a bit and i thought the ending was fantastic you know but i'm i'm gonna go with a b look at how hard i'm being <laughs> How about you? Um, Had this not been a penultimate episode, I would have given it an A. But because it was and it didn't feel like we were leading to anything, I'm going to give it a C plus. You know what? I think you just nailed it. I think that's exactly why I went B and I didn't go higher because it didn't have that penultimate feel. Like I said, I love the chemistry. It was a great story, but it was just like, you know, we finally got we got lots of Janny. But like, so everybody's probably like, but you got your Janny. How could you give it a C plus? Because it's a penultimate. And watching as much TV as I do for as long as I have, it's just like, what? <laughs> that's all. That's, that's really what it is. Because it was great. It was great getting the Janny in there. And that final scene with with uh, Manny and Zed, I just I thought it was fantastic. It's like, oh, here we go. But this is the last to next or the next to last episode. It didn't do setup. It didn't do anything, which tells me they didn't think it was really ending here. Well, that and it's David S. Goyer in charge. <laughs> just throwing that out there. He's good with the team, but like left to his own devices, you know, it's kind of that 
wandering mentality. And in this case, got a little lost out in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I think we probably have the same scene of the night. It's the very last scene with Manny and Zed, and she's just looking at him, and he's looking at her. I would say that was scene of the night. Oh, when I live tweeted it, it was wonderful. But like when you rewatch it, I think that's what it comes down to. Had I only just gone off the uh, when I was live tweeting this episode, it would have probably stayed at an A. But the rewatch, when you start thinking about the technical aspects of things, I don't really think I had a lot of the night though, other than when. Manny said, uh, John's like undoes the spell. And he's like, that's right. I could have done it <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> and Manny growls at him. I think the growl is the line of the night. You know what? I, I, this is going to sound so wussy, but I totally agree with you. I mean, it's like, yeah, I just agree with everything, but I do agree on that one. Uh, when I, when I went back and I was rewatching through this, like kind of scanning through, uh, I, I wasn't finding a particular line or a moment that stood out where I was like, oh my gosh, I died when he said this. I think the growl really was it. The growl was great. Most memorable moment? Crickets. (laughs) (laughs) It's the same thing. Zed and Manny is really the most memorable moment because once again, when I, as I'm sitting here thinking about the episode, the one thing that pops into my head is that scene of them sitting in the church and him appearing to Zed and Constantine kind of like, Oh, you know, they, they, that whole thing was just really well done. It just didn't have the the punch it needed, but it was really well done. It was the scene that I will take away from this. How about you? Um, I think my most memorable moment is when we real when, you know, it's revealed that it was the doctor. Like he didn't have, it seemed like he didn't have a clue and we finally get the confirmation that, yeah, it's the heart of darkness storyline. I just, I just kind of like that. Oh, uh, let's see. Character of the night. <laughs> Manny. <Janice. Yes. laughs> Without a doubt, hands down. <laughs> well, that brings us to some shameless plugs and self-promotion. Rob's favorite part. Yeah, of course. Well, you know what? I am kind of a business guy, so I love this part. You can find past episodes of this and all of our podcasts at our website, which is www.southgatemediagroup.com. And I'll just be quick. You can follow this, the network on Twitter at Southgate Media Group, and you can follow me on Twitter at R Southgate, as well as a million other podcasts and things. How about you, Lilith? Uh, well, you can follow this podcast at Newcastle Crew. Find me at Lilith Hellfire on Twitter. Um, you can check out my new blog, Little Pop Culture Vulture. It's basically just me being a total pop culture junkie and comic book geek. Like, I just finally let it all hang out. That's just totally all me on that blog. So that's just about all we have for you for this discussion of episode 112. Angels of Great, uh, Angels and Ministers of Grace. Uh, look forward to talking about the next episode, 113, the the season one finale, hopefully not series finale of Constantine.